Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Literary Lord. Today we're going to be starting with the Act 2. So here it is. Act 2, Scene 1. The Scene 2 was started in St. James Park, where the ladies, Mrs. Final and Miss Marwood, Elma, discussed things about men. Mrs. Final told her that men were so disgusting that if they love, then they have jealousy and become so insecure. And if they don't love, then they run from women as if one runs from seeing a ghost. And they become lazy in their approach, which ultimately every man becomes, even those die-hard lovers too. At first, Miss Marvel wanted to test Mrs. Final and hence showed her disregard towards her statement and said that not loving men just because of the fear that they would leave would be just like wishing to have a birth as an old person as because that is the destiny. One should live the youth with passion. But then later on, Miss Ma would mingle her talk with Mrs. Final and said that she hates men and was despising them and the next level where she wanted to go was to ignore them like hell. Mrs. Final and Miss Ma would talk about the relationships of same and different sexes and said that the females have a better bonding and understanding and they are more trustable. Then Miss Marwood told her fantasized plan about marrying a man who loves her and then to pretend that she had an affair with someone else and make him a cuckold and let him down his whole life in jealousy and pain. Then Mrs. Final asked that whether she was interested in Mirabel, to which she answered that she hated him, and her blushing by listening his name was just due to her hatred towards him. And then Mrs. Ma Miss Marwood pointed towards uh, Mrs. Final, who after some time blushed a bit too. Then came Mr. Final and Mirabel. Mr. Final and Mrs. Final pretended to be a very loving and a caring couple, but that was a fake thing. Mrs. Final then wanted to talk about the last night cable, hence she took Mirabel aside, leaving alone Final and Miss Marwood. Mirabel asked whether there would be any objection in this from Final's side, to which she said that he would not have any curiosity in hearing about any scandal because he would love to escape from making a, 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 a scandal by, by walking with his wife, which was actually a, a hint towards Finals's lazy approach towards his wife. In being left alone, Final and Miss Marwood talked freely with each other and Marwood showed her interest in following Mirabel, but Final denied that and accused Miss Marwood of being in love with, Miss, uh, with Mirabel, to which she clearly denied and said that she hated him. But Final, on this answer, said that it was because of this because of his denial for her love that, that made her hate him, by the fact was that she loved him. Marwood asked proof from him, to which Final told about the incident of Marwood's involvement in breaking the marriage to be of Mirabel and Miss Milliman by poisoning the ears of Lady Wishford. She did it because that would keep Mirabel free to love and be romantic. Miss Marwood again denied and said that she did it because of her friendship with Lady Wishford and that she saved her from that self-proud man. Final called the relationship of women the pious one and in return Marwood called men void and empty-hearted with their promises too. Final again teased Marwood and said that she was his wife's friend too and there she carried an affair with her friend's husband. And on that teasing, Marwood said that he himself was the part of it. When Final accused Marwood that she was jealous of Mrs. Final as they both were in love with Mirabel, and then, Ma then Marwood threatened him by disclosing their affair in front of his wife, in which Final threatened her back for her fame was also at stake. Miss Marwood proceeded to leave him and tried to go away, but Final stopped her like a desperate lover and asked her pardon and told her that he would leave his wife and rob her from all her fortune and then they, Final and Miss Marwood, would somewhere else live a happy life. Then, on the arrival of Mirabel and Mrs. Final, the two hide themselves. Thank you, sir. Act 2, Scene 2 The scene 2 began with the talks of Mirabel and Mrs. Final. 
The two continued from the last scene and were talking to each other. Mrs. Fina lamented about her position and told that her husband was very offensive and that she was not happy with him and told Mirabel to find a solution as he only made her marry him in order to hide the result or the threat of the result of lovemaking with Mirabel. Then we come to know that maybe Mrs. Fina was pregnant from Mirabel or maybe she was afraid to be, hence Mirabel made her marry Fina who was well enough to get the position of a father. Mirabel said that Final was a nice gentleman, though with fake love, but he was good enough to get, to give credit to the child if happens to be any, and no man lesser than him would have had made that better option. And finally he told her that after all the thing, if she could not handle the problem, then, then she knew the remedy, which seems to be the divorce. Then the discussion moved on towards uh, Mirabel's side, and Mrs. Final asked about his plan and its proceedings. To which Mirabel told her that everything was going as per plan. One thing knew that Wait will married Foible, they both wedded and bedded, and that Waitwell was all ready to play the role of Sir Rowland, Mirabel's supposed uncle. Meanwhile, their talk, there came the sweetheart, the heroine of the play, Miss Millament, with her lady mincing and her follower Whitwood. Mrs. Final asked her what took her so late. Miss Millament said that she did all her best. In haste, but then later on she remembered that she got laid because of the letters. Meanwhile, the talk Whitwood was interrupting inter irritatingly by comparing the situations, but was left aside in the talk between Miss Millament and Mirabel. Mirabel then asked Mrs. Final to take Whitwood away so that they can have some lone time, and so she did. Mirabel and Millament, on being alone, had their had their talk. Mirabel was angry that she didn't give him a private time last time last night at the cable, and was also annoyed with the type of company she had. Miss Millerman, on the other hand, gave lectures of freedom in an ironical way, and all she meant was to have fun. Miss Millerman in the beginning also said that she was sorry to give him pain, but then later on said that being able to give pain was power, and power was youth without which one is old. Mirabel in return said that the pain would one day kill their lover and then they would be already old because it is the lovers who tell them that they are beautiful and make them remember about their youth and motivate them to remain young. After all this, Mirabel was trying to be serious for one moment but Millamant didn't even try it to be and when he tried to tell her his plan, she said that she already knew about it and told him that he can guess that who told her the devil or foible, and left him after all those beautiful teases. Mirabel, being a bit irritated but still in love, said that a lover's situation is the most mingled one. Even a person living in a windmill does not have as much whimsicals as a lover has in his heart. After this came the newly wedded and bedded couple, Waitwell and Foible, and asked their pardon for being late to Mirabel. Mirabel told them that they must have had fun a lot and then asked about the plan. Foible told him that proceedings were on and that she told Lady Wishford that she went to meet Sir Rowland and showed her a picture which she kept with her after which Sir Rowland was willing to meet her. After seeing Marwood somewhere, Foible decided to haste for home so that she could tell her lady some story before Marwood does us and went away. Mirabel asked Waitwell that whether he was ready for the new role or not, to which he said that a lot of things happened with him in a day. He got wedded, attended, and a lot many more things. Hence he lost his previous recognition, which will not lead him to any mistake, and that he wondered whether he would ever be able to be the same after completion of his role. The scene then ended with the whole act too.